Welcome to the first lecture in general topology. The topics that we'll explore in this lecture include a very brief history of topology, some very basic notions from set theory, relations and functions, cardinality, and operations on sets. Topology started as a branch of geometry, but today is a fundamental division of mathematics along with geometry, algebra, and analysis. The study of topology focused on properties of geometric figures that were preserved under transformations represented by bijective functions where both the function and its inverse are continuous. These functions have a special name. They are called homeomorphisms. Mathematicians began to conceive of a geometric figure in space as being made up of a finite set of joined fundamental pieces. This gradually led to the concept that any arbitrary set of elements can constitute a topological space. And it is this latter viewpoint that has evolved into what we today know as set topology or general topology. The earlier geometric viewpoint has survived and has evolved into what we know today as algebraic topology. General topology has evolved into the study of abstract spaces and their properties. Of particular interest are those properties which are preserved under homeomorphisms. Such properties are called topological properties. So fundamentally, general topology is about abstract spaces formed from arbitrary sets. And so the foundation underlying topology, and in fact all of modern mathematics, is set theory. In this lecture, we will set the stage for defining a topology by first considering very basic notions from set theory. Throughout the course, we will cover the necessary set theory as it arises. Okay, so the first term we take as a primitive notion from set theory, that is, we do not truly define it, rather we accept as a fundamental intuitive fact that a set is a collection of objects and those objects are called the elements or members of the set. So let A be a set. This notation means that X is an element of the set A. And this notation means that X is not an element of the set A. Okay, so now we come to our first true definition. Let A and B be sets. Then A is a subset of the set B. And this is denoted this way. If every element in the set A is also an element in the set B. So in notation, A is a subset of the set B if given an arbitrary element in the set A, this implies that the same element is in the set B. Okay, we accept as an axiom from set theory the existence 
of a set, which we denote this way, that has no elements. This set is called the empty set. or the null set. All right? So let A be any set then the empty set is a subset of the set A. Now notice that the empty set satisfies the definition of subset vacuously. That is, there are no elements of this empty set that must be contained in the other set. Okay, so now we can define set equality. Once again, let A and B be sets. Then set A is equal to the set B, that is, A and B are the same set if and only if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. So in notation, A is equal to B, if and only if, notice the abbreviation IFF, A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A. Now another way you may see this written is A is equal to B, then you have double arrows, A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A. This is read the same way. The set A is equal to the set B if and only if both A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. So in order to prove that two sets are equal, we must demonstrate that each set is a subset of the other. All right? So let's now look at some uh, related notation around the uh, concepts of uh, subset and set equality. This notation, which I used in the definition for subset, means that for every element in the set A, that element is also in the set B. Now this symbol, the upside down letter A, is called the universal quantifier and it is read for every. So once again A is a subset of B if for every element in the set A that element is in the set B. This notation where this symbol is read subset equality means that either a is a subset of B, or A is equal to B. And this notation, with a bar through the equality sign and the subset equal, uh, this is read. This uh, symbol is read subset non-equal. 
means that A is a subset of B, and in fact, A is not equal to B. Now, this notation, A subset equal B, is the notation that I'll use most often uh, because I want to allow for the possibility that the two sets are equal. So now we can uh, give a new definition. If A is a subset of B, which is not equal to B, then A is called a proper subset. of the set B. Okay, so now we come to our first mini theorem, which we will state as a lemma. Every subset, or rather every set, is a subset of itself. The proof is quite simple. This is just a special case of the uh, definition. Let A be a set, and let X be an element in the set A. Then, as given an arbitrary element in the set A, this implies that that element is in the set A. A is a subset of the set A. And here we definitely have the equality. All right, so now we'll prove uh, another lemma. We will prove the transitivity, uh, transitivity of uh, subsets. That is, if A is a subset of B, and B is in turn a subset of another set C, then A is a subset of that set C. So proof. Suppose that A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of C. Let the element x be in the set A. Then, as A is a subset of B, that element is in the set B. Now, as B is a subset of C, that element is in the set C. And hence, for every element in the set A, that element is in the set C. Therefore, A is a subset of the set C. And so we can represent this fact in uh, one statement that we call a chain. A is a subset of B, which is a subset of C. Notice that in this chain, any set that precedes another is a subset of the one that follows it. All right, so now we can give a new definition. Once again, let A and B be sets. The Cartesian product of A and B is the set which we denote A cross B and this is the set consisting of ordered pairs AB where the first element in the ordered pair comes from the set on the left of the cross and the second element in the pair comes from the set on the right of the cross. So again, order does matter. So let's look at an example.
So let the set A be the set which contains two elements, A and B. And let the set B be the set which contains the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Then the Cartesian product, A cross B, is the set of ordered pairs, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, and B3. So uh, once again, order does matter. So notice that the ordered pair 2B is not in the Cartesian product A cross B, but the same ordered pair 2B is in the Cartesian product B cross A. Okay, so we have a special name for a subset of a Cartesian product. Once again, let A and B B sets. A relation between A and B. Is any subset R of the Cartesian product A cross B. So let's look at a uh, few examples of notation uh, around the concept of a relation between two sets. As it is a subset of the Cartesian product, its elements are ordered pairs if it is non-empty. And so sometimes it'll be notated this way. The ordered pair AB is in the relation R. Another way to uh, show that this ordered pair is in the relation is to write it this way. A relation B, that is A is related to B. An example that you are probably familiar with is A is less than or equal to B. Here the uh, relation is the less than or equal relation. And so we read this, A is less than or equal to B. And for any arbitrary uh, relation, we can uh, say that A is related to B. Okay, so now we look at a special type of relation that we call a function. So once again, let A and B be sets. A function between the sets A and B is a non-empty relation which we will call phi with the following property. If the ordered pair AB is in the relation and a second ordered pair with the same first element is in the relation, then the second element in each ordered pair must be the same. So in other words, a function between the sets A and B is a non-empty relation for which a single element in the first set is mapped to a single element in the second set. Now a function is also called a map or mapping 